confiscate the society to create their own. To grow spinach. Make tofu. And hammocks. Civilization didn't notice their absence. But is their life outside civilization possible? hospital in this building. Victoria Bulmaga gave birth to her first child here. Through this window I showed my husband our son Andre for the first time. After a long sleepless night of heavy labor, Andre was born. He had a small injury from the difficult birth. So he was brought to his mother for breastfeeding, already wrapped up, after which doctors wouldn't allow her even to hold her own child. I looked at the door, and a strange thought came to me. Could it be that they had brought me a different baby? A mother of three sons, Victoria Bulmaga has never really given much thought as to why her eldest child is so much unlike his parents and siblings. For Victoria, her main concern has always been to make sure that the boys were well fed, properly dressed, and happy. Her husband Nikolai treated all his sons equally. He never played favorites or saw any of them as an ugly duckling. When his son was just two years old, Nikolai drew this picture on the wall of the house. Only years later did he realize that it had a much deeper significance. Once, when we already had kids, my wife and I were looking at this picture. Suddenly it dawned upon us. The two white swans were our younger children, Carlin and Victor. Both of them were blonde. But then there was the black swan, our dark-haired and dark-eyed boy Andre. How could this happen? Peace in the family was nearly shattered when the parents discovered that they had spent the past 18 years raising someone else's child. It turned out that the swan was not ours. It was from another flock. My mum and dad told me that I was not their son. There was another one. I did not believe it first. I was immediately offended and shocked. I did not know how to react. I ran away from home. But then I talked to my friends and calmed down and came back. A Shakespearean drama began to unfold in the Bulmaga family when Andre took a mandatory blood test to get a passport. He turned out to have the rare type B blood, where his father and mother were type O and A respectively. The result surprised even the most experienced doctors. They told me that it was impossible to have a different type of blood, unlike your parents. I took an interest in genetics. I found out what eye color, hair color could inherit a child from his hands. Then I calmed down for a while. But still, I was haunted by the idea. If Andre was not my child, then where was my son? Uh, let's look at uh, the most commonly used uh, blood type group, which is like ABO 
system. Uh, ADO has four different types. One, which is zero, then A, which is two, B, which is three, and AB, which is four. For example, in our case, uh, we have mother who is type two. Um, she has either A allele or AA or A0. Father is type one, and the father has only zero, zero. The child in question has a blood type three, which can be either DD or B0. Either the father or the mother, or both of them, are not the biological parent of the For Victoria, discovering the blood type was just a tip of the iceberg. Searching through the family's files at home, she found old documents that had been untouched for years. Hello, Dr. Yusuf. When Andre turned one month, I went to the doctor to measure his spine from one heel. I was very surprised. The baby weighed 2,300 grams at birth. But when discharged from hospital, his weight was 3,250 grams. His height was 56 centimeters, but a month later, it was 52 centimeters. Back then, when I was young, I thought that my milk was so bad. The oldest son in the Bulgaria family has always been an introvert, always reserved and silent. He was nothing like his outgoing parents and didn't kick up a fuss like his brothers. When the two younger sons were born, we began noticing that he was somewhat different. He did not sit down at the table together with us. He refused to eat what we ate. He would stand up and walk off without saying anything. People often told us, he is very unlike you. And we loved it all. Yes, he's more like our neighbor. Nikolai and Victoria began a private investigation. They gained access to the archives of the old maternity hospital and found something startling. On the exact same day that Andre was born, another woman had given birth to a boy at the same hospital. She lived in a neighboring village, but the couple was too late. She had already left with her only son. I was given a copy of the pictures of this boy and of his mother. I looked at him and could hardly believe my eyes. I put that boy's picture next to mine and on this picture next to that woman's picture. And it all became clear to me. And when I saw a picture of the father, there was no more doubt in my mind. Andre and his real father, the boy, were like two peas in a pot. For almost 16 years, Victoria's son lived in a neighboring village. His name was Fyodor, and he had blonde hair. It's not easy for him to remember his childhood. His upbringing was difficult to bear. Poverty is everywhere here, as you can see. I had to work, take care of the cattle, and chop wood. Fyodor was an only son, but for some reason, he always felt as though he didn't quite belong. My parents were always quarreling. My father even beat my mom. Mom told me once that the neighbors around used to make fun of her, saying that her son did not look like her at all, as I was too blonde. Every day, Victoria looked into the faces of the boys who bought pies from her kiosk in the city market. She hoped that someday, her first biological son would come to buy something, and that she would recognize him. I went to a neighbor who worked at the market, and I took this picture with me. I told her that our son had been switched at the hospital. I showed her the picture, saying it was my son. And she said that she knew him, as he had come over there. They did see each other at the market many times. And Victoria's heart still aches at the thought that she used to take money from her own son for the pies. Later, I remembered that boy, with something out of the ordinary in his eyes. He was poorly dressed and very skinny. 
When Fyodor turned 16, his father died. Together with his mother, Fyodor moved to Russia, to the northern city of Yakutsk, 6,000 kilometers away. Two years later, when Fyodor turned 18, he learned that his was not the same blood as the people he thought were his parents. Victoria and Nikolai eventually found the phone number of the woman who may have been raising their son. Nikolai called, and it was Fyodor who answered the phone. It was about three in the morning. I was living in Yakutsk at the time. Some man called. He said we had a mutual friend. And then he asked if I looked like my father and mother. I said something rude to him in response. Something like, why are you asking such questions? Who are you? And why are you calling me at such an hour? I asked him if he'd ever been told in his childhood that he'd been swapped at the hospital. I explained to him that we had raised a son and recently learned that he was not ours. When he heard this, his voice changed at once. I realized that my son was crying at the other end of the line. The incredible story was first published in the newspapers, but it soon captured the attention of TV journalists. The drama of the two families finally meeting after 18 years reached its peak on live television. When the Blood Brothers met, the boys could barely hold back their tears to say nothing of the father. Of course it was a shock. When I saw my brothers, I felt as though I had found my soulmates. There were very deep emotions welling up inside me. But what looks like a happy ending for everyone involved was in fact just the beginning of the real drama. <laughs> it was interesting how it would all end. He got into his car, turned his head away, and drove off. It was so hard to part. We seemed to have found our son again, and again he was not around. But we comforted ourselves with the thought that he would come back to us. Three months after that meeting, Fyodor came to visit his biological parents just for a few days to get to know them better. But he ended up staying there for 18 months. In the cold city of Yakutsk, the woman who had raised him had been left alone.
try to imitate them. America and Europe cry bravo. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. Meanwhile, back in Russia, military artists are losing their grip on the audiences. Young people, especially soldiers, they seem to need a different rhythm now. Musical Army has been fighting for 85 years now. Will it stay in tune with the times and win over the younger audiences of today? Or has the time come to give up the fight and admit defeat? Find out on RT Documentary. On the edge of human capabilities. Struggling with pain and rebound. Lay out to become the first. Move forward and fall in love. This frail woman works at a car park as a gatekeeper. Under her watch, she makes sure strangers stay off the premises and keeps a strict account of the cars coming and going till they return on time. She doesn't get paid much. It's just enough to keep her going. Maria Spinel is only 38. The child she brought up for 18 years went to his real parents, while her biological son refused to come to her. Fyodor told me that he would go to Moldova to visit them, to see how they live. Six months passed. Then I asked him when he was going to come back. And he said that he was ashamed to leave his parents. Oh, you feel ashamed? Aren't you ashamed after I have been raising you for 18 years? Well, okay. Of course it hurts. But what can I do? Well, I thought if Fyodor was there, probably Andre could come to me. And little by little, we would find a common language. But it did not work. Then Fyodor told me they would come to visit me. But I do not know when it will happen. Fyodor's real parents have never had money troubles. Just like many other people in Moldova, Nikolai sells homemade wine. Victoria, meanwhile, makes pastries. Here we go. The new family offered Fyodor everything he lacked in his childhood. A comfortable life with a quiet family and blood brothers. I saw that I had the same character traits as my biological parents. When I arrived in Moldova and got to know them better, I realized that Andre was just like the parents who had raised me. I got it straight away. I never thought they would not love me anymore. I know my parents, they love me. But I was afraid to talk to them. I don't know why, but I was afraid. Andre found himself in a difficult position, having to welcome the person whose place he had been occupying since childhood. But he was not going to step aside because of Fyodor. Andre is very jealous. Should we reproach him about anything, he immediately takes offense and does not want to talk. Guys, do you want some juice? Andre, want some? Yeah, okay. 
For the parents, a meeting with their biological son also meant the possible loss of the son whom they'd raised. Andre told me once, Mom, I'm going to Yakutsk. I answered that he was 18 already and he could go wherever he wanted. But then I spent two hours crying, walking around the house so that he didn't see me crying. I got so scared. But he didn't leave. For Fyodor, a year and a half with the new family felt like a month. All of that time back in Yakutsk, Maria Spino patiently awaited her guests. Only the occasional phone call brightened her loneliness. Fyodor? Hello. Hi, Mo. How are you? It's Fyodor who calls Maria time after time. Her true son, Andre, never dials her number. Only occasionally does he take the receiver from his brother. Andre, it's Mom. Hello. I'm not expecting anyone anymore, because I know that no one will come. It is my fate. Maria has often seen her whole life as a real tragedy. Her deceased husband believed that their son was born as a result of her adultery. He beat her and turned her out of the house, together with the baby. It never struck Maria that the doctors at the hospital could mistakenly have given her the wrong child. I gave birth to my son on the way to the hospital and was unconscious for almost three days. That is why I did not see the baby. And then they first brought a dark-haired baby to me, but then they said it was not mine and brought another one to me, a blonde one. The task of finding those guilty in this mix-up was fruitless. The prosecutor's investigation found that the doctors who'd been on duty that day, when Andre and Fyodor were born, had already quit their jobs or retired. There was no one to remember what had happened that day. We made the decision not to initiate criminal proceedings because of the lack of evidence under the article on the exchange of babies. Everything that happened has been classified as negligence. You have the right to apply to court for compensation for material and moral damage. Before they were able to claim for compensation from the hospital, the Bulmaga family would have to take DNA tests because the lawyers would be unable to accept a family resemblance as solid evidence. Physical appearance uh, can be uh, a good indicator of uh, relationship between, between people and throughout the ages this trait was used to show whether a particular child is the biological child or a particular parent. However, it's uh, not a definitive answer, it's rather an indication of a possibility of parentage or non-parentage. If you look at our case, for example, we can see that uh, two parents have uh, dark hair uh, and the child has uh, white hair, for example. But uh, it is also possible that uh, two people with dark hair have a child with a fair hair and the hair actually will darken with age. But also if you look at the other case where we have uh, the Andre, for example, with two of his uh, brothers when he was little, it is actually quite tricky to say that he is not uh, the biological brother of these two children. I mean, with the high knowledge you can, but if you look like this, you know, it's a, it's a tough call. Moldova has no special laboratories for DNA analysis. The Bulmagas had to send their blood samples abroad to have the results returned by mail. There is one vital person missing from this table, on whom the moment of truth depends. The family decided that to take a DNA sample from the second mother, one of the sons had to go to her. After 6,000 kilometers and more than 24 hours, Fyodor returns home to the woman he once called his mother in childhood. When she saw her son through the window, Maria was still struggling with feelings of resentment and could not hold back her tears. Hi, Mom. Mom. Why are you crying? 
What happened? It's okay. Fyodor can hardly recognize his own mother. She has lost 20 kilos over the past year. It seems that Maria still believes Fyodor is her son. And perhaps with the help of this test, everything will go back to the way it was, and her beloved child will never leave her again. What we did, we analyzed uh, DNA profiles from Maria and Fyodor to see whether Maria is the biological mother of the Fyodor or not. And genetic data indicates that Maria is excluded from being the biological mother of Fyodor. Uh, what we did next uh, is we obtained DNA profiles from Victoria Bulmaga, Nikolai Bulmaga, and uh, their alleged son, Andre Bulmaga. And in this case, we had to exclude biological parentage of either parents. So Andre is not the biological child of either Nikolai or Victoria. Afterwards, we took DNA profile from Fyodor and compared it with DNA profiles from Victoria and Nikolai. And in this case, we obtained uh, a non-exclusion, which indicates that biological parentage of both parents is possible. And the probability of this biological parentage is 99.9999998%, which is almost 100%, which indicates that Fyodor is actually the biological child of Victoria and Nikolai, and not the biological child of Maria. <laughs> stopped trying to persuade Fyodor to stay. She understands now that she has no such right. Fyodor officially is with his biological parents. He has decided to leave Maria and move to Moldova, most likely never to return. She's far away. She's suffering. It's hard for her to be without us. She feels abandoned. Of course I feel bad about it. But nothing can be done. We will try to help her somehow. The parents organized a party to celebrate their son's return to Moldova. The whole family gathered together for the occasion. Nikolai and Victoria were confident that Fyodor was their son, regardless of any DNA test. Andre is still the boy who they raised for 18 years as if he was their own. He will always remain dear to them. No, I think Phil is my brother. We can't call him a stranger. We go on my brothers. You know, it is certainly joyous that we have found our son. But we have never ever thought of abandoning Andre. He's our son. And I explained to my younger sons, God forbid you to ever say to Andre that he is not your brother. Even if you quarrel, always remember that he is your brother and love him just like you always have. Quite recently, another boy appeared in the Bulmaga family. Nikolai and Victoria have now adopted Vlad who was abandoned by his parents. <laughs> the warmth of the family fireplace is what unites everyone in this home. In the parents rests the spark of love for each child. But one who has no child to love is Maria. She's left all alone in the far northern city of Yakutsk.